In the Pivot Podcast, the hosts Fred, Ryan and Channing are joined by guest Tai Lu, who is the head coach of the Los Angeles Clippers. They discuss the amount of work that goes into each day during the NBA season, with Tai explaining that some members of his team, such as those in the video room, rarely get days off. They also talk about Tai's background, as he grew up in a small town in Missouri with little representation in the basketball world. Tai explains that he had to move to Kansas City in order to begin getting recruited and playing for AAU teams. This was a difficult move for him as he had to leave his family behind, but it ultimately paid off as he was able to get to where he wanted to be and eventually become a championship coach. Tai attributes his success to his upbringing in a small town, where everyone has a hand in raising you and instilling a strong work ethic. He emphasizes the difficulty of sleepless nights and the constant pressure to find ways to win. Lou also talks about the impact of losing LeBron James and Kyrie Irving on his team and how the team had to adjust its strategies and find new ways to win games. He highlights the emotional difficulty of losing respected players and the need for coaches to accept that it is part of the business. The discussion also touches on the greatness of LeBron James and the impact of his bloodline on his success. Ty discusses the similarities between young talents such as LeBron James Jr. and other players in the league who are trying to find their way. He also discusses the possibility of coaching his son, Brownie, someday. When asked if there is any pushback from stars because of his background as a player, Lou explains that winning a championship means you get stamped as a good coach. He also acknowledges that the grind to become a coach is different for everyone and cites Tom Thibodeau and Jeff Van Gundy as examples of coaches who had to work their way up from the bottom. Finally, Lou talks about the pressure that comes with coaching all-stars and future Hall of Famers and how expectations are heaped upon the team to win. Lou discusses how important it is to be a leader, especially when the team loses games or fails to execute certain plays, leading to sleepless nights. As a coach, he must take responsibility for any mistakes made, even if it was the fault of one of the players. Lou also talks about his journey to becoming a coach and how his uncle, Michael J., taught him the value of hard work at a young age. Despite being a successful coach, Lou admits to still wanting to be a player. The conversation then shifts to how involved Lou is with the off-court lives of his players, including their financial questions, partying, and relationships. He doesn't struggle with getting involved and offers advice to his young players when needed. The conversation goes on with an optimistic outlook on the current state of the team, with Lou expressing confidence in their playoff chances. Ty Lu talks about how he sees himself not just as a coach, but also as a young black man who can inspire black and brown children around the world. Lou discusses how he reaches out to more than just basketball players and athletes, but also to people who can help advance cultural progress. He describes his role as more significant than just winning games or being a part of a billion-dollar corporation. He sees his position as an opportunity to inspire the next generation. Lou speaks about the importance of respecting the game and giving back and offering advice to young people who get drafted into the NBA. He emphasizes the significance of respecting the game, putting in work every single day, not cheating the game, and not cheating the process. Additionally, Lou talks about the cruciality of being a good person, even during tough times. Lou shares some personal information regarding his decision to stay with his team during a seven-family member crisis, even though he could have taken the easy way out, providing an example of leadership that young players can learn from. Lou states that if it was not for basketball, he would not have been able to experience success in his life, especially growing up in Mexico where he did not see success around him every day. He explains that coming from a small town, he has a lot of responsibility to take care of his family, and the best way to do so is through basketball. Lou goes on to talk about the pivotal moment in his life where he moved to Kansas City and had to make it worth it for his family. He describes the moment when he saw his mother cry and knew that he had to succeed in basketball for his family. The discussion also touches on Lou's favorite football teams Chiefs and Rams and how he thought he could hoop in high school until he got to college. In this portion of the Pivot Podcast, guest Tai Lu discusses his upbringing and how he was able to avoid running with the wrong crowd due to positive influences from his family and older peers. He also talks about his experiences with basketball and how the prominence of social media has changed the way young players can achieve success and notoriety. Lu believes that while being on an AAU team is still a big platform, social media can give players just as much exposure. However, he also notes that there is a difference in how much players have to grind and work for success now compared to when he was growing up. He also discusses his own journey to the NBA, recalling the moment he was drafted by the Denver Nuggets and then shortly after traded to the Lakers, where he would be playing with legends Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. Ty Lue had come from humble beginnings and wanted to take care of his family when he got drafted. His mom and grandmother didn't have to work another day in their life after he started supporting them financially. 
He also shared how he preferred giving money to his family even if it meant being broke as long as they were happy and successful. Tai Lu also shared his initial experience joining the prestigious Lakers organization, where he had to find his role and defer to superstar players like Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. It was different from his college experience where he was the leading scorer, and he had to find ways to contribute to the team in other ways like playing defense. Eddie Jones, who took him under his wing, helped show Ty the ropes when he first got to LA. Shaq also welcomed him and took him to the Century Club, gave him money, and invited him to his home. Shaq made him feel comfortable in the organization, and Ty became a key part of the team, even appearing on the court in the playoffs. Ty Lu discusses how playing against Allen Iverson changed his career for the better. Lou admits that he was not a defensive player during his high school and college years but the challenge of playing against AI led him to become one. He credits AI for helping him get his next contract and stay in the league for 11 years. Lou also highlights how the infamous, step over, incident between him and AI helped his career as it was a moment that got him noticed by Doug Collins, who later became his coach in Washington. He reveals that had Toronto won the series against Philly, he probably wouldn't have seen the floor and may not have had a chance to guard AI in the finals which ultimately helped his career. Lou goes on to discuss his mindset when faced with guarding AI in the finals. He explains that being put on the playoff roster was his first challenge, and if he didn't make it, he wouldn't have been able to play even if six players got hurt. The second challenge was getting the opportunity to play in the finals as he wasn't getting any playtime since the first round. However, when he was finally called to play in the third quarter of the finals, he jumped at the chance despite feeling nervous about guarding someone he idolized. Lou reveals that he had studied AI's moves and counters, which gave him an advantage in guarding him. Ty won two championships early in his career and had the opportunity to play with Michael Jordan as well. He then went on to play for different teams and never got the chance to be back in that championship-winning spot again. Ty reflects on not having any regrets about his career and says that it was a matter of taking care of his family by chasing the money, especially since he was not a marquee player. Ty was a role player throughout his career, and he knew his role. He says he was always a team guy and just wanted to fit in well with the teams he played for. He did not want to become a player that wasn't just a role player. Ty talks about a particular incident in his last year at Milwaukee where he was not getting enough playing time. He spoke to Scott Skiles and told him that if he put him in with 10 seconds left in the game, he would run his ass up there and do what he was supposed to. Ty Lu shared on how he transitioned into coaching. Despite being an unselfish team player during his playing years, Lou decided to take up coaching after his retirement from active play. Doc Rivers, who had been Lou's coach in Orlando in 2003, saw potential in Lou and encouraged him to try coaching, even giving him a spot in his team's coaching staff. Initially hesitant about the idea of coaching, Lou started out in player development to test the waters. With Rivers' guidance, Lou eventually got more involved in coaching defense and learned a lot, which made him realize he enjoyed coaching. In addition to Lou's coaching journey, he shared his experiences playing with Michael Jordan and what it was like to see Jordan's work ethic firsthand. Lou reflected on how he thought he was working hard until he saw Jordan, who was 40 years old at the time, be the first in the gym and the last to leave every day. Jordan even practiced and played on one leg during a year when he was injured, which left an impression on Lou and pushed him to work harder. Jordan's leadership and commitment to the team also impressed Lou. Lou also talked about his experience with Kobe Bryant, and how Bryant is compared to Jordan outside of LeBron James. Ty Lue brings up the killer instinct of basketball legends Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. According to Lue there, will to want to kill you every single night and take your heart, sets them apart from other great players like LeBron James, who has a different mentality of wanting to win but also make his teammates better. Lue also talks about the evolution of the game and how low management has become a topic of discussion. He acknowledges that science and data have shown that certain strategies can help players in their longevity and preparing for the playoffs, even though he played in the old school days, where players like Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant played every game. Lou also reflects on his experience as a coach leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to an improbable 3-1 comeback in the NBA Finals, noting the challenge of taking over midseason with no training camp and expectations to win a championship. However, with the help of players like Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, and LeBron James, Lou was able to achieve that feat he begins describing the challenges of becoming a coach without any prior experience, including not having any time to practice before his first game. However, he credits his success to the players on his team, including LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Caleb, for pushing him to be a better coach. The host then asks Lou about the importance of playing experience for coaches. 
Lou explains that playing experience helps coaches understand what players are going through, such as knowing when they're tired and need a day off, or having gone through the grind of two-a-day practices. He also believes that his playing experience allows him to relate to players better, as he has been in every role a player can be in a starter, a bench player, a traded player, and even a cut player. He uses this experience to communicate with younger players and help them understand their role on the team. The hosts ask Lou about how he manages the personalities of superstar players such as Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard. Lou emphasizes the importance of communication, saying that he tells his players the truth, even if they might react negatively at first. He also asks his players for their input and preferences, incorporating their thoughts into the game plan, to ensure everyone is comfortable on the court. Ty Lu mentions that he has stolen from every great coach he has worked with, including Phil Jackson, Scott Skiles, Van Gundy, and Doc Rivers. From Jackson, he learned how to be poised on the sidelines and let his team figure things out in practice. Skiles' tendency to bring the team in after every game helped Lou understand the importance of not overreacting to a game's outcome. Regarding his experience coaching in Cleveland, Lou explains that the general manager believed it would be unfair for him to go through a rebuilding phase after LeBron James and Kyrie Irving left the team. Lou thought that as a young black coach, he should be on a stage where he has a chance to win every year. Although he acknowledges that winning is not everything, he believes it is essential for his coaching career. Lou discusses the stresses and difficulties of coaching, from the constant analyzing of games to the management of egos and dealing with rich, grown men. He emphasizes how coaching in basketball is different than that in football, as in basketball, the coaches work all week for every game and need to manage the emotional impacts of every outcome. Lou notes that coaching is a demanding job that requires a lot of effort and emotional investment. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.